Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing fans. But you know that already, don't you? I'm joined today by Rico, my friend from London, originally Finland, works in PR and marketing. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He helped me start Porky's Corner, as most of you know. For those of you that don't, this is Rico. Say hello, Rico. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Don't get any nightmares. Or well, hopefully he didn't have any nightmares last night. <laughs> uh, thanks for everybody liking and subscribing uh, to videos and leaving a comment. It's uh, all going in the right direction now, so it's all coming together. Uh, Rico, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Actually, last night was good because there was some decent boxing, uh, free-to-air boxing, uh, so it was felt like the first weekend since this pandemic where there was actually quite a few decent cards running and you didn't have to pay for them and, you know, at least big name fighters fighting out there. Yeah. Uh, what did you think to uh, Josh Taylor against the the guy that Dennis nearly signed? Uh, the Thai kid. I can't pronounce his name. So, uh, you know, I think it's, as Bob Arum said in the IFL video that most people have seen that. I understand why there's mandatories in boxing and it makes sense that it allows people not to duck fighters, but there needs to be some sort of standard for these mandatories because this guy that came over, Josh Taylor would have had harder sparring. Yeah. I mean, he's not even at British level, this guy that came over. What did you think to Ben Davidson making out that this guy was some kind of ice man? This tie kid. You know, I mean, look, they, they have to, right? They have to try and build it up. And from Cam Taylor's side, right, they, they need to make this win about Josh Taylor improving his body punching and, you know, going up levels under a new trainer. And when he fights against Ramirez, he's this body puncher. Uh, but we all know this guy. I mean, you can't really knock somebody that's a pro boxer, but this guy was nowhere near the level that you should be as a mandatory challenger. <laughs> and that, that's really what makes a mockery of the sport. So imagine if people had paid to go and watch Josh Taylor to fight against this kid and people would have spent 50, 60, 70 quid tickets to go and watch this charade. Or imagine just the fact that people are actually tuning in to watch this. I mean, Josh Taylor must feel a bit embarrassed about the level of opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, we'll come back to that with Bob Arum and that. Uh, look, the dressing, the the polishing turds now, aren't they? It's yeah, in yeah. a desperate situation, boxing, isn't it? Because fighters are going to get title shots now that shouldn't really be an English title shot. That guy with area level one, he really last night. Yes, he's, he's Bob Arum. Well, I will mention it. Bob Arum's going on about Jack Cattrall having a padded record. Fair enough, but he's beat O'Hara Davis. Mm -hmm. Uh. What were that guy who were in with Josh Taylor last night? He had a padded record, didn't he? he Did he ever fight outside of Thailand? I'm not sure. But, but uh, how, how do these guys become mandatories if they don't fight anyone? That's the missing link for me. So surely, if you become a mandatory, you should be fighting against decent opposition to become sort of the number one ranked guy. So you can't just fight in backwaters and not have any credible wins and then suddenly you become the second best fight in the fight in, Did he even fight an eliminator or a final eliminator, Rico? I have no idea. It'd be interesting I have no idea. No. Now and have a look. Well, I'll have a look, yeah. But no, but if he hasn't fought against a credible opponent, it's hard to believe how he ever got to that level. Come here, Rocky. Come here. Well, this is the, so the last The last guy he fought against was 9 11 <laughs> in no. Thailand. Well, this is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. Promoters and managers, what they do, they lobby sanctioning bodies, take them out for a meal, they lobby them to get bumped up the rankings. It's gone on for years and this is what needs to stop. You've got to be there on merit. You understand merit. People don't mm. lobby uh, football teams to get into the Champions League top four, do they? They're there on merit at end at Premier League, aren't they? So why are we going yeah. around in circles with this? Why are we going around it? We're going around in circles with it, mate, and it's doing me head. And that kid, right, would would be flogged by any 
listen, Anthony Tomlinson, Chris Jenkinson, and Connor Ben would flog mm -hmm. that China man or whatever it, wherever they were, Thai man. They, they'd flog him. They flog. They would have flogged him last night, right? That guys that are like English stroke British level in, the, in England. They'd have flogged him, mate. No messing about. He had no business being in there with the WBSS champion, an undefeated, unified champion and won a massive tournament and he's fighting him last night so WBA and IBF hang your heads in shame anyway let, let's cut off from that because I, I, I don't want to hear all this Josh Taylor's an ice man Josh Taylor if people go back on my channel two years ago I said he beat Mikey Garcia didn't I do you remember mm -hmm. and uh, I think I, would, I think you put the video up yeah and everybody said, Pokey, you're talking pony. Well, he's at that stage now. He will beat Mikey Garcia. If they were to fight, he beats Mikey Garcia now because boxing's about timing. I called it two years ago and everybody said, well, crazy, apart from a few people from Scotland. Now, this is how I look at it. Josh Taylor, I think, has climbed top at Mountain and I think he might be coming down now. Because he shouldn't be in with guys like that. Why are they putting him in with a guy like that? His true test will come when he fights Ramirez. But what I think they'll do, they'll try and get him in with Ritson. I think that's what they'll try and do. They'll try and keep the money coming in. That's, that's what it's all about, keeping the money coming in. But... Uh, I'm not sure about that, about fighting Ritson. Because remember, Bob Arum has his own agenda. Bob Arum's agenda is not tied to the British uh, broadcasters. So... If he, when he can, he'll just take Josh Taylor and put him in. Because Ramirez is a big ticket seller in uh, Fresno, California, where he's from. And he's, a, and he's one of the few American fighters that actually is a big ticket seller. And a, you know, somebody that's really loved by his area and community. So, Josh Taylor fights a unification fight in California. That sells a lot of tickets. And also, I think it's of interest to the US audience because they know Josh Taylor from beating Pro Gray. So if Bob, if anybody but Bob Arum was running, you know, managing or promoting Josh Taylor, they would just keep the money coming in. But Bob Arum, he makes more money by taking Josh Taylor to the US. Yeah, but you've got to look at it like this, right? They're not they're not selling tickets no more because they're fighting in empty arenas and fighting in studios. Yeah, at the moment it's at the moment, yeah, but moment, that might be next year, hopefully. Well, and then you've got Ritsons with it with top ranking he now. An MTK. Is he? No, he's not with Eddie Hearn, is he? No, he's not. So if you go back on my little film that I did when I went up north, so the we MTK and apparently the we top rank as well. So that fight can be made in a heartbeat. But Bob Arum shouldn't throw people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Out. I'm going to come out and defend Eddie Hearn, and everybody's going to go, "Okay, you're defending Eddie. You're not hardcore." Look. Eddie can sell crap, can't it? He can sell Santa Arabs, but what we've got, you've got Bob Arum shouting about this, shouting about Jack Catchell having a padded record. Well, what about uh, that guy who fought Josh Taylor last night? There were more padding in that than some cushions on my king size bed here, mate. I'm telling you now, mate. So this is how I look at it. They're just the same. Bob Arum's just bitching because the ant. You can't get a TV deal for Crawford against Kelbrook and Loma against, is it Lopez, his fights? Yeah. Loma. But we'll, we'll move on to that shortly. So, what did you think about the other fights that were on the show? Uh, to be honest, I was watching World Boxing Super Series. <laughs> so, you can cover the other fights. It, oh, it's really? a bit of a shame that these things went uh, on top of each other. But I was really are. interested in other fights. So we'll go straight into Bradis against uh, Dorticus. Yeah, what do you think to that? Uh, I thought it was a good fight. Um, I think both are very good fighters. Same both are like knocking on 35. Um, you always want a knockout in cruiserweight fights. So unfortunately, we didn't get that. But, it was, you know, they were both technically good fighters. And Bradis is somebody, when I watched him fight against Yusik, um, he was a very close fight in my opinion, could have gone either way. And I think if that fight would have went to the fourth judges, if they would have scored it as a draw, uh, Bradis would have won that fight, actually, against Yusik. But, yeah, I thought Bradis boxed really well. Uh, he managed to keep himself on the outside, and he really stuck to a game plan, whereas Dorsey, of course, is very reliant on actually knocking somebody out. But 
the right man won the fight and I, I thought, um, yeah, I thought it was a good fight. It's like elite level boxing. Yeah. Two guys that are top of their division fighting against each other in a competitive matchup. And I, I don't think we've had that in um, boxing since it's come back until last night. And we'll talk a bit about the Showtime fights as well. But yeah. What did you think to Jose Burton losing a one-sided decision to that uh, foreign geezer? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Latvian. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, you know what? I think he lost the fight, but the scorecard was wide. But I don't think Jose Burton... We actually know him. We know him best for nearly beating Frank Bullioni and then getting knocked out in the last round. Who's his best win, though, Jose Burton's? I don't know, to be honest. I don't. He's and he's also and he's also um, he's not very active, is he? Not active. Uh, he doesn't sell himself on social media. Don't do tickets. No. Uh, and I'm, well, this is how I look at it, right? They went out there and he performed like a scared rabbit, in my opinion, mate. I thought he was trying to throw shots. I don't know what happened. I just think that. Maybe he might have put his tenant wind in half at yard fight in Boatsy because I think Joe Gallagher will throw him under a bus now, do you? Yes. That's what's going to happen now. Yard and Boatsy will say, yes, please. Whereas before, after his school bugly only for the first 10, 11 rounds, they'd have been thinking, hmm, not ready for him yet. But now they'll be thinking, we'll have some of that. That's what I think. I think they'll both fight him and then they'll fight each other. I think it'll be prolonged. The Yard Boatsy thing, I think that could be another year. Uh, but I feel for Jose Burton. But you look, you look at you look who were in the ring last night, right? And this is two types of people Jose Burton, a traveler, yeah? Yeah. Tyson Fury, a traveler. What's Tyson Fury doing at the other end of Europe last night in the middle of a pandemic in a suit, studying ring? He's going to say supporting his friend, but I'm going to say he's. He's putting himself out there as the Tyson Fury Roadshow, isn't he? Because that's what it is now, isn't it? He's the number one man, mm-hmm. isn't he? He gets it, Tyson, doesn't he? A bit like Bellew, he got it, didn't he? Yeah. He got it. Jose Burton doesn't get it, does he? There has to be a balance. With Tyson, you've got overkill, haven't you? I think Burton's also hasn't been well managed. So even though he lost that Bullioni fight, the momentum from there, we haven't really seen him, and that happened four years ago, right? We haven't really seen him since. He hasn't been fighting on big shows. Uh, they haven't done anything to build him up. And in that four year, in that four years since he lost, Boatsy's turned pro, and you know Boatsy is where he is. Yards fought against Kovalev, but they've done nothing to build him, his profile. Maybe that, as you said, maybe part of that's on Jose Burton, but part of that's also on the management. So he's been fighting on small hall shows. And they've done nothing. And then they chuck him in against the guy that he should really be beating. But they make that fight in Latvia, right? He's never going to win that on points. No. Um, yeah. I thought the scorecards were a bit bad as well. Like, boy, will. Yeah. I didn't give him that many rounds. I gave him two rounds. How many you give him? Um, I'd say maybe two, three or something like that. I don't know why he had his hand up at end with Joe, like Joe Gallagher. I don't know. I don't know, man. Look, look, this is how I look at it, right? Where does Jose Burton go from here now? Is he heading for Skid Row? Yeah, I mean, he's just going to be an opponent to somebody, one to build their name. Can opponent just... based on the fact that he lost to Frank Bullione in a close fight. Yeah, can I just say that uh, a couple of years ago, I thought he was going to go away, Jose Burton, but when I look through his record, it's, it's padded again, isn't it? The, it's padded. It's a padded massively, record. massively. But as I said, bad management. I mean, they haven't capitalised on any momentum that he's had or they hadn't really progressed him. And he can't be years in the wilderness and then fight against somebody that's half decent uh, in a foreign country. Like, you need to stack everything in your favour. If you lose into Frank Bullioni and that guy last night with foreign name, Johnny Kickabout, whatever, Fred, Joe Startemoter. If you lose into Joe Startemoter, in wherever, some backwater Latvia. Latvia or wherever, 
Latvia? Is that a country, yeah? Yeah, yeah, Latvia, yeah. They're I, caught in oh, Latvia. Isn't that a pole dancer or something, Latvia? Oh, it's Latvia. <laughs> I never did job. <laughs> it was just a twag it. So, basically, he's heading for Skid Row, then. He's going to end up thrown under a bus in him by Tesco, Joe and Eddie. And well, not even Eddie's not even involved anymore. He's, a, he's an MTK man, right? He, no, there's, there's, there's an MTK, MTK but... Yeah, they're going to want some money back, though, aren't they, from him now, aren't they? Definitely. Got to make the yard fight or Boatsy, aren't they? But they're not MTK, are they? So that could be hard to make. But he might come again. It just could have been a bad night at the office. He might need a change of trainer. He might I think it's a yard Adam fight. Booth. He might go to Adam Booth. I mean, everybody goes to Adam Booth. Oh, he's the best. I, I think um, I've said this years ago. I think for yard against him. I don't think Yard would accept that fight. Burton is six foot four, and Yard is a short guy. I mean, I've met him before, and he's say five eight, five nine at best. He's a short guy, so just for the reach, he's not the type of guy that you just want to put Yard in. Yeah, Anthony Yard against Steve. Yeah, Burton. Yeah, Burton. Just the size difference. It doesn't make sense to have him as an opponent. He's just too big. Not that he'd win that, but it's just North style that suits Yard. It right. won't make Yard look good. Moving on then, what about Charlo? You know what? Um, the other Charlo, the one five four fighter that knocked out Rosario with body punch. That was a proper body punch. He just winded him, but he's a you know, he's a very talented fighter. Um and they've they've just done they've just done their own business, right? The Charlos, they just go on. Um, he lost to obviously Harrison, won that fight back, went straight into a unification fight, beat Rosario. He's got, I think, three belts now. Uh, so you can't really, um, I thought it was a good performance. The other one that fought against Derbachenko, I would have won my accumulator because I thought Derbachenko is going to be that busy that he's just going to win the fight. But, you know, he, he beat him quite comfortably and boxed really well. So I think that was a career best performance from the 160 pound uh, Charlo brother I think they did their business and that was a pretty stacked bill I think there's four, four or five world title fights um, competitive matchups so I thought it was a good night of boxing from Showtime uh, Steven Espinosa and these guys they, they did the business and credit to um, Al Heyman and PBC for putting on the show what competitive fights like that in the middle of a pandemic with no real crowds yeah. All right, then. Moving on, then. Uh, I'll just go through all these other points that I've made up, because I'm going to split it. 30 for you, 30 for Terry, yeah? Johnny Nelson's come out, and he said that uh, he don't want to see Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul because KSI beat him, and that it's an exhibition, and blah de blah blah and But if he's, if, he's, if he's there to do a job with Sky, he'll do it. But... It, and. And he's going on about Logan Paul lost to KSI, blah, blah, blah. Isn't this the guy that said that Floyd Mayweather uh, loses against Conor McGregor down the straight because of fitness? Well, yes, but isn't the broader point, it doesn't matter whether he lost to KSI because the point here is that he shouldn't be fighting against YouTubers. Okay, I mean, Floyd, Floyd fought in Japan against that guy. He's an exhibition if Floyd wants to make money by fighting exhibitions and doing these things, it's his prerogative, but no boxing network should really be buying these things or should really be even commenting about this. He shouldn't be I doing airtime for stuff like that. Yeah, we, we might as well just jump straight in with the Bob Aaron thing. Sky Sports. But, but, just, but just one thing. <clears throat> Would you see Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville talk about soccer aid in a serious manner? Now, Roy Keane hates it, doesn't he? Exactly. But this is what boxing's become now. It's the sideshow side show Bob job, isn't it? Exactly. What Manny Pacquiao against Conor McGregor. Um... This is what I'm coming to now, and Bob Arum having a go, because no, Sky Sports are looking at this Logan Paul thing with Floyd Mayweather, but they're not interested in Kelbrook Crawford, Lomachenko Lopez. I mean, this, this is where people like Dennis, with Eurosports, should be jumping in. Dennis has got a good relationship with Bob Arum. When Dennis's dad were dying, we were in this room in Burley, Sheffield, and we were in the front room, 
big telly on the screen, up betting slips, side at bed, and obviously he's on his deathbed. Dennis is on the phone, Bob Aaron ringing him to see how his dad is. So Dennis should be making a move and saying, Bob, well, are we going to get this on Eurosport? Do you know what I mean? Somebody yeah. from Britain has got to get Kel Brook and Crawford on free to air TV. They've got to buy it, even if it's 20, 30, well, you can buy it 50 grand, stuff like that. It might be 25 grand, not cheap. Get some sponsorship in Eurosport. You'd even pay five quid for that on pay per view, wouldn't you, Crawford Kelbrook? Yeah, we would do. Um, but yeah, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a pay per view. But you know, if this is a country, I think as Paul Barron said, if there are networks in this country that want to invest in boxing and think that boxing's a good product, they should be buying because it's like not showing the Champions League here just because you don't have it or you know you can't make money of it. And that's where boxing's heading in this country, has been heading for a long time, is the angle is we'll only show fights that build fighters so that we can get them on pay-per-view. It's all, we won't give anything back to the fans. Yeah. Did anybody even show um, the Showtime card last night? I, th- I don't think any of the major broadcasters showed that, did they? You know why? They've spent all the money at the beginning of the season, haven't they? And they've got no money. So TV is saying, if you want this on, you're going to have to dip into your own pot. Well, that's what's happened. It's like with Sky, isn't it? 20 yeah, days, exactly. 20 days, but, 3 million quid. You get that at the beginning of the season. You've got to put 20 dates on. Eddie put 16 dates on, didn't he? And he had four left. Yeah. And he had to get them four out, didn't he? But it's 150 grand a show if what Eddie gets from Sky, isn't it? We know that, don't we? Right? So... If you've got 150 grand and no fans, how are you going to put a show on? You've got to go pay per view, haven't you? Now, we put free shows on with no pay per view. But I bet all them free shows he did for less than 450. You know, yeah. 150 each. So he'd have broke even because he looks at it like the TV money is his and some of the gate money. Uh, sorry, our promoters look at it. The TV money they try and keep for themselves, right? You're getting three million quid a year off Sky. That's in your pocket. So what you've got to do with them, you've got to sell, sell the, sell the hell out of the shows on IFL, Sky Sports, Boxing Social, Behind the Glitch. You've got to hammer YouTube and sell them, and that's what Eddie does well. So all the gate money that pays for the fighters, doesn't it? And if you're mm-hmm. lucky, you might cop the sponsorship for yourself as well as the TV money. The pay-per-views are a bit different because how Eddie works it, they partner up with him, don't they? And they let them own the show, the boxer, don't they? Yeah. But the non-pay-per-view shows, we have to give Eddie Earn credit because he's switched on. Other people, this is why they don't like to pay anybody because they're paying them out of their own pocket if they're not pulling gate receipts in. They've got no gate money coming in now, have they? Right. So how are they going to pay fighters? So fighters... They've got to take a hit, haven't they, off the TV, yeah. which he's already had up front anyway. So he's paying them out of his own pocket, so they're going to get them on cheap. I know some offers that have been made to some of the fighters because I've seen them, and they're very derogatory. Boxers are getting paid less now than they were 20 years ago. You know that, don't you? Mm-hmm. And I think we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I think a fledgling TV company like Free Sports or one that's been going years Eurosport, they should be picking up Kelbrook Crawford and doing like a pay-per-view, but on a smaller scale. I'd like to see Mick Hennessy pick it up on Channel 5 and do some sort of pay-per-view or ITV. And Richard Poxon's supposed to be big cheese at ITV. Why isn't he getting in touch with Bob Bob Arum? Because he's probably out of his depth, but Mick Hennessy ain't out of his depth. He should be getting in touch with Bob Arum and saying, we'll have Kelbrook and Crawford on Channel 5, and I'll put a show on that night in England, and then it can carry on into the American night. You see what I'm coming yeah. with? And we'd all pay. I'd pay a tenner for it. It's worth a tenner, isn't it? We can't let it you is, but... Crawford without it being pay-per-view. I can't, I can't understand how Sky Sports are not helping Kel Brook out. I've given Kel Brook loads of stick, mainly because he's badly advised. But when the push come to the push, Kel Brook's been discarded like rubbish by Sky and by Matchroom. Am I right? 
That is right. There you go. So we've covered Bob Aaron. We've covered uh, the fight. I'll, I'll just say one point on the thing you said. And I think one of the things is boxers and their managers don't invest in building in their own brand because if they did, and if promoters did that as well, building a better brand for boxing, you know, making it a bigger sport, then some of the revenue would be covered by sponsorship. And that's why they sell reliance on TV company money that they can't give the best product because everything's sort of on a transactional basis. So the only time sponsors are interested is when there's an Anthony Joshua fight, right? And otherwise there's no sponsors. Which other sports operates on the basis that it's so reliant on one person? It's not like football when David Beckham plays, then everybody's interested. But when there's another, you know, when there's other teams playing back in the day, then people aren't interested. Yeah. And that's yeah. why everything's so centered around uh, one athlete and it's all about building one athlete's brand. And, you know, while Anthony Joshua and his team have done an amazing job in building his brand and making him into a star, but that hasn't trickled down to the wider boxing. And that's why the wider boxing is struggling because he can't put a show on that doesn't have Anthony Joshua that actually has sponsors. Yeah. And that could help push up purses and everything else in boxing. Yeah. That's a good point, Rico. Very good point. Uh, I'm going to have to mention this. You're a black guy, Rico. Black lives mm -hmm. matter. Traveller lives matter. What about ex-cons from prison lives mattering? But what next? Are we going to have vegan lives matter? Vegetarian lives matter? Is this now the year of 2020 where... Everybody wants to protest and milk and play the victim and this and that and just bend the rules. What's going on, Rico? For, for financial gain as well, as well. What's happening with all this pro protesting? I, you know, I fundamentally believe everybody should have a right to protest because it's in that democracy. So everybody should have a right to protest and stuff. And if, if the protests are deemed to be legit, that people actually believe that, you know, there's cause for protest, then... You might make legislation changes. The government might look at it and so forth. Or, you know, it, protesting, whether you're standing on the streets, there's more to it than having IFL and behind the gloves there, right? Like you want to actually make some sort of change and you want to get institutions talking about things or real changes. So I guess you're referring to the TLM where Tyson Fury was there. Yeah. Um, they have a right to protest, right? But yeah. I'd like to see Tyson Fury then, if he was so passionate about this thing, I'd like to see him talk about it in IFL interviews uh, rather than just have them there to film the thing. Uh, he was on Piers Morgan, Good Morning Britain this week. Did you I would have liked him there? Uh, I don't think so, no. So I'd like to see... He was on there yeah. at 8 o'clock in the morning, morning 8.30, yeah. but at 8 o'clock at night, 12 hours later... He's doing Traveller Lives Matter in his own town. But how come he didn't mention it in the morning in London on Piers Morgan? It's just a, just a just point I'm right. Or did he, have a he, light, uh, did he have a light bulb moment in the afternoon? I'm not sure about that. But did, has he put a lot about it on his social media? He not said a word about it till the other day. So, you know, I'm not... As I said, everybody has the right to process, right? Uh... And should do but then in Tyson Fury's case and having the boxing channels there I'd like to know more about what it's specifically about and then you know what everybody can do to change and you know what everybody needs to educate themselves on so I think that's all I'm going to really say about that topic yeah it's it's a uh, my own personal opinion is this right They've had a bit of news, right? And Tyson's the PR master, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Had a bit of news. The Joshua fight could be round the corner or close. And it could be because Eddie Earns come out on here and said they're going to drop WBO or they might have to. Yes. Could be Black Lives Matter against Traveller Lives Matter. Tyson's good friends with Jerry Cooney. We know how Larry Holmes, Jerry Cooney, yes. Don King worked. They broke records with pay per view with the. Using the race wars to sell, to sell the fight. Is Tyson now in that bracket where he's only copying because he's a historian, Tyson, he knows his box. Yes. 
is he going to be using race to sell Joshua Fury, Fury Joshua? For I think, to be honest, I think... Game. To be honest, I think that will be a sub-narrative. If we remember uh, Wilder against Fury 1, right? That was a bit of a sub-narrative. And there was talk about... Remember when uh, Wilder did that interview with uh, Radio Raheem and, um, you know, that became viral. So, so I think, yeah, and that was discussed at the press conference and there was a bit of sub-narrative around that. So I think in some ways that will definitely become a sub-narrative. Whether it's intentional or not, I'm not sure, but there will be an element of that. But again, I don't, I don't think boxing should really stoop down to that level, right? It's two men in the ring fighting and the athletes and should have nothing to do with the colour of these guys' skins. Well, I'm going to take it as a pinch of salt that he said he's going to take a million travellers to London. Well, let's see it happen because he said it now, hasn't he? But he says a lot of things, doesn't he, and don't back it up. Although he, does yes. it, he backs it up in ring, doesn't he? Yes, exactly. Uh, moving on then. Uh, let me just get onto this little page here. Right. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll leave that one. Oh, what? Sorry. What we've we've spoke about Jose Burton, haven't we? Uh, let's have a look. What's that page done? Uh, Rocky Fielding. What next for Rocky Fielding? Christ, good question. I, I think he'll probably end up being like Jose Burton. He'll end up going and being an opponent somewhere. I think Rocky Fielding as well, after that Canelo fight, it's hard for him to accept a small purse somewhere. Yeah. He didn't he have those South African backers at some point? Remember? We what? Oh, yeah, Rocky well, Fielding. Yeah, it were... Uh... Rodney Burnman won it or something like yes. that. We're back in Marty Murray and, and Rocky. Yeah, I wonder what happened with that. Anybody in the comments, if anybody knows, uh, write a comment and let us know. But yeah, I, you know, he's. What happened with Dennis's deal with MTK when they put a presser out saying he's working with MTK 18 months ago? That hasn't happened, has it? People nope. put press releases out to pay lip service to the fighters. All promoters do it. And they say, oh, my promoters put some out. Oh, we've got some ain't mixed. So then when offers come in from other promoters, oh, now we're going to have to knock that offer back because we're on with this. But mm -hmm. no, whatever happens, all we see is a lot of rubbish put out, people playing the game. And this is why I just flipped my lid. I, I've got to say about Rocky Feeling, though, what, from Prize Fighter, if you think about that, he's had a pretty amazing career, like given his set of talents. And the way he's come from, he's he's done he's you know he's done really well for himself financially, and you know he's fought against the best, so you can't really knock him from that sense. But you know, I think he's we know what his level is at, right? He shouldn't have been in there with Canelo, should he? Were thrown under a bus, money. Yeah, but money, Googs, life changing money. Exactly, but uh, this is another thing where that shouldn't have been sanctioned that fight. Yeah. He did hold the title then, didn't he? But you know what I mean. What? Right? He did what? He, hold, he held that WBA regular title at that point. So that's why they took the fight, so that Canelo could jump up and take another title on paper. Yeah, maybe. Speaking of Canelo, what do you think about Canelo suing Dazone for $280 million? Um, well, I'm going to regurgitate a lot of stuff uh, I listened to in Highfield Boxing on Terry's podcast. We had a good point, and I said it, I said it before on Twitter that if you have a contract, uh, whether it's your job or something, and they agree to pay you X per fight or you know per event, if they sign that contract and agreed on that, they can't come back and say, because everything that's going on, we can't pay that. So I think... It comes down to a few things. It comes down to the fact that they have a contract, so Canelo has a right to argue and say, well, we agreed that, because we all knew it was a ridiculous deal from the outset. We all knew it was a really bad deal. But I think part of it as well is it's just a way for Canelo to get away with Oscar De La Hoya to try and get rid of him. So there's probably bigger forces at play here, where they just want to use it as a way to say, OK, you remove Oscar... I don't take. I don't give any of my promotional money to him. It's just going to be Canelo Promotions, 
and I get more money that way and I'll have a deal with the zone on myself without any involvement with Golden Boy promotions. Yeah. Uh, do you remember two years ago in May 2018 when I put a video out and I said, look, this will not last two years. That's on. We had you earn. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. The way they were going, it lasted what, 22 months. We had it. So I want, well, not one person apart from you and a couple of others have said, okay, you was right. I mean, even when I go into local cafe and then people knowing there what I was going to mention about the zone, when I walk in there, they just go, <laughs> okay, Porky, you was right. <laughs> And I don't want to be smug about it, but I told you all I shook up the world and you all said I were hating against boxing. I told you all it was a con. All this about we've got Manhattan box, we've got Manhattan officers, matchroom boxing USA. I said, I'll give you two years. It lasted 22 months. Kneel you know, before many of me. Kneel <laughs> before me. Never, ever question me. You might get me when I'm about 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, nice baby. <coughs> were I right? Were I right? You were right. Uh, uh, a lot of other stuff, though. Yeah, of course, but you know, a broken clock's right twice today. Yeah, even, <laughs> what with some, somebody I say, oh, we used to work. We said even a, a dog can find a bone, or even a pig can find a truffle. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while. I yeah, uh, I mean the zone, the way how they came, all guns pay, blazing and overpaying fighters. It was never going to be sustainable. <laughs> boxing is not big enough sports. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on then, Jamie Moore. What do you think about Jamie Moore's stable? <coughs> Rocky Who's in his stable currently? Rocky, Rocky Fielding. White Rhino. Yep. Chantel Cameron. Yep. Carl Fram Fram yeah, Frampton. What do you think to them? Martin Murray. <clears throat> uh, the only person that's really on the art pool at the peak of their career is Chantel Cameron. All the rest of them, do you think, could on slide? Of course. I mean, they're all older fighters, aren't they? I mean, yeah. Frampton might have one or two more fights left in him. Uh, Rocky Fielding. Might have one or more, one or two more. I think Jamie Murray did uh, not Jamie Murray. Uh, Matt Martin Murray. He retired at one point, didn't he? But so come back now. Mm, yeah, he's still, so, he's still knocking about on the scene. Martin Martin uh, Murray is like uh, when people mention him, they say stalwart now, don't they? Old yeah, sports and stalwart uh, and old school and all that because he's been there, seen it, done it. He was robbed for a world title, wasn't he, in Germany? We know that, don't we? He was. And he fought well against Canelo, sorry, against Golovkin in Monaco. I thought, he, you know, he showed a little oh, half up. Sergio Martinez. So yeah. That, that could have gone the other way, couldn't it? He, um, yeah, I, but he's 38 now or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, he's seen better days. He's heading for Skid Row as regards boxing. But I know people can say, oh, Porky, you being harsh saying Skid Row, the boxers, you got to give him respect. Look, I'm only saying what people in the pub would say and what other professional boxers would say. They might say, he's finished, he's had it, he's shot. Well, I don't say that. I say Skid Row. Skid Row don't mean he's going to be living in a bedsit with no money. Martin Murray's set up for life. Skid Row means his boxing career. It's not what it were. So don't misinterpret my words, all you haters. But we wish Martin Murray, be the, we wish Martin Murray the best, don't we? Yeah, I mean, he's, again, another guy that has had a really good career, uh, fought against the best. He can look back at his career and he can be quite proud of his achievements. Didn't fight Macklin, didn't fight Barker. Two cancellations against Billy Joe. A Lee. Didn't fight Lee, right? Fight Andy Lee, yeah. I thought he'd have beat Andy Lee. I thought he'd have iced him. Uh, Chantel Cameron, is she... Being put in this hard fight so that she can't get to Katie Taylor because Katie Taylor's on the slide and Chantel Cameron's supposed to be the next big thing, isn't she? Because she's in an hard fight. She's fighting someone that's beat Katie Taylor in amateurs, isn't she? 
But you know what? With women's boxing, I haven't seen most of these people fight, and they they can just say somebody's beat someone in the amateurs. Maybe they were fourteen or fifteen at the time, or you know, amateurs are amateurs, right? We don't really know uh, what that means. So maybe it isn't a hard fight, and it's a bit like Delphine Pursuit against Katie Taylor. One's a professional fighter; the other one's a police officer that takes time off to work. So. Being, beating Katie Taylor as an amateur doesn't mean anything if you're not a professional fighter, if you're going to have to take time off. Or that woman, that Rachel Ball, that beat Shannon Courtney, right? She's a social worker, takes time off to do about boxing. What, what does it mean? So the problem with me to try and get excited about women's fighting, women's fights are, unless they two fighters that I know that tend to be Brits or few of the Americans, is I don't know the level of the opposition. Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. But we wish Chantelle Cameron all the best. She's a massive puncher. Yeah, she's a good fighter. Uh, they don't want to put Terry Harper near her, do they? No. Nope. Uh, White Rhino, will he ever win a belt? I mean, we're hearing now that it's White Rhino, 8.0, Operation White Rhino. He's fighting out in Usex camp. Uh, bless him. He's got no Wi-Fi and he's living in, he's living in a bedroom that I won't put a dog in. But sometimes you've got to tough it out. But did you see Usek on YouTube? He's in a barn late, living on, laying on straw, isn't he? I mean, that's hard to call that, isn't it? <laughs> he's, a, he's a character. Usek sleeps on straw. I mean, what, what next? It's like uh, when David A started eating kangaroo meat, everybody else started eating <laughs> it? Matthew Atten will beat Kel Brook. Why? He's eating kangaroo meat. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? With Dave, I wouldn't be surprised if he became a sparring partner. There's quite good money in that. Yeah. Oh, second then Povetkin. If Dave sticks it out, and I'd give, I'd give people evens that he doesn't, but if he sticks it out, two week with Usek, two week with Povetkin, is it because Jamie Moore's put him in that situation and said, Go spot, go spar them. Let's see how serious you are. Because if he don't stick it out, will Jamie Moore wash his hands of him? And if he does stick it out, does that stand him in good stead? Because I don't think he's ever had proper camps like that, has he? Well, it's standing proper stead. Look at uh, Malik Scott, right? He's a very good sparring partner. He's often recruited to do sparring for some of the best heavyweights, and he. You know, he's a guy that makes good money out of sparring and it's not a bad career being a sparring partner, is it? Can For we, some fighters, it's, all, it's easier. You don't have to deal with the pressure. Uh, you're not going to get usually knocked out. You, if, you got the right, if you're in the right setup, then, you know, you get looked after quite well. Yeah. Uh, all right, then. So we wish White Rhino all the best then, don't we? Yep. Yeah. But what we don't like is the White Rhino knocking fights back for good money like Dubois. His stock would have risen if he lasted rounds against Dubois, you know. I mean, I thought that was a bad decision. I thought he were caught between not wanting to go work with Frank and upset Eddie and thinking, well, if I get Ahmed here, where do I go? He's only 21. I think he were caught in, um, in that mindset. Do you think? I just think... Um... You know, you knock back big offers when you don't necessarily want fights. And I think, I, you know, if he would have fought against Dubois and, let's say, get knocked out, then he probably wouldn't be sparring against Usyk. So maybe he'll just look at the sparring partner lifestyle and say, there's good money in there, I can travel, against, I can travel around the world, I'll be looked after, and that's just going to tick me over. And he might not fight for another six months to a year. I don't think he's one of those guys that's going to fight for less money because there's no crowds. Yeah, a bit like David Price. They've had, they've had 200 grand to fight Dave, 400 grand to fight Povetkin. He's not going to fight for 40 grand now, is he, David Price? No. And Dave's not going to go back to fighting for 10 grand, is he, and 15 grand and what, whatever. No. I see where they're coming from, and let's have it right. Dave's had his head punched upside down, and he? so he deserves them big paydays, doesn't he? Well, exactly. I don't think they've looked after him like they should have done match him. I think they've thrown him under a lot of buses and he's come through at the other end, talking like Scooby-Doo, isn't he? 
the other day on that interview with Rob Tebbert and Michael Watson, he sounded like Riddick Bow. And I'm worried yeah. for him. I worry for him. Because he meets everything with his head, doesn't he? Well, that's it. I mean, and it comes back to the point of boxing needs to have better brain scans and other things, but that costs money, right? And there's no incentive as a fighter for you to show up with a brain scan that shows that you've got some sort of problems. But then what ends up happening is, you know, there's head traumas and other things. And um, perhaps, you know, perhaps they might know that there's something that isn't 100% right and being a sparring partner is a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. All right, then moving on. John Arden versus Linus Adolfia. Yeah, you know what? I've, uh, I've met Linus a few times. I've watched him fight on Steve Goodwin showed. Uh, he's, the last time he fought on TV, he didn't look very good, but you know he's a very good fighter, and I think he'll beat uh, John Harding Jr. quite handedly, if I'm being honest. Yeah? Yeah, he'll beat him handedly. I think... Um, you know, John Harding Jr. is a good try and he's a, you know, he's, he's had an interesting life, put it that way, um, and he's turned his life for the better. So best of luck for him. And um, I think in terms of his management team, they've put him in a lot of tough fights and he's accepted a lot of tough fights, but Linus is just a class above. All right, then. Liam Cameron, will he return? And if so, will he be the same fighter? I mean, it's it's hard for me to look at this logically and say that he'll ever be the same fighter because obviously, you know, Liam's had a tough couple of years. He's put on quite a bit of weight. He's got a cup weight. Um, the momentum that was there, it's hard to sort of recreate that momentum. Will he return into boxing? I sadly don't think that he will because people just don't want to, people aren't going to back him and nobody's going to take a chance for him. I wish somebody would give him a chance. I wish somebody would give him an opportunity because I think he's been treated awfully by the board. Um, you know, he's very unfairly treated in his, you know, his sanction. But maybe he'll go and do some sort of other martial, you know, sort of combat sport, whether that's the bare knuckle fighting, whether that's mixed martial art. Because I think for him, um, for his own well-being and for him to remain focused it's important that he has something where he goes to gym and works towards something. So I wish he, I wish he finds something. I wish he finds peace. Well, he's been banned now for two and a half years for allegedly taking uh, a very small uh, recreational amount of cocaine. That's so that he, he denies it. But what boxer admits drug charges? None of them do, do they? But two and a half years he's banned so far and he's got 18 months left on his ban. Do you think that ban's harsh? Uh, yeah, compared to what other fighters guess, yes. And also, from what I understand, from the amounts that you're talking about, you're talking about minor traces, and yep. he would have talked about that, that that would have happened during the fight week or, you know, fight week. So I just think... If somebody tests positive, yes, they need to be banned, but also you need to look at, you know, the length of the band. If the length of the bands were equal and fair, if the band was two and a half years, it doesn't matter what you take, um, then I understand that, but it doesn't work that way, does it? No. Other people get bands overturned. Other people get shorter bands that are with bigger promoters. Other people sue UCAD and get off that way. Some people's B samples go missing. Dylan White. So they used him to make an example of him, didn't they? Yeah, and I feel for him. Do you feel, though, that uh, Dennis could have backed him? You know, I don't really know. I mean, we've spoken offline and stuff, but I don't really know the circumstances that well. So I don't really know what was discussed between the two of them. You know, what was the situation? How was Liam about it? So... What I, I mean, what I mean is, when Dylan White had his issues, Eddie Hearn were wheeled out, wasn't he? Everybody were wheeled out to defend Dylan White. But we didn't see any of that with Liam, did we? Nobody were wheeled part out. Of it, but part of it is that nobody cared about Liam, even when he was fighting well, in the bigger boxing media, until the ban. We're talking until about, the ban. Yeah, but wait, what you're missing point, Rico, is... Liam were Commonwealth champion at the time and world ranked number 12 with IBF. Mm -hmm. 
people like nobody cared. That's why I, I cared. Cause he's no, like, you cared, but you obviously have your channel, right? But yeah. what, did he have IFL and all the others? Did he have them knocking on Dennis's door asking to, no, to give his perspective? No. No, they didn't. IFL come knocking once he got his four-year ban. They wanted to put it out there to put it in mixed with Dylan White's situation and all that, you know, to where were IFL when Liam got busted? Well, that's what I mean, right? So it's not... So the case is, yes, of course, there are people that cared, but it wasn't of interest to the mainstream boxing media until the ban was there and, he hit, you know, he hit rock bottom, which is well, a shame. What was, said, what was said basically was, well, it's from Sheffield, all his mates are villains, blah de blah and they're all bang at it. And they started tying in with that, that brush, didn't they? But, but nobody... Had, look, if you've got a platform, you can mask over a lot of things. And I don't, I don't think anybody went out to bat for, for Liam personally. In media and in his circle and his team, I don't think anybody went out to bat for him. I think his trainer did, Chris Smedley, but I don't think other people went out to bat for him. That's what I think anyway. But That's it fair. Is what it is. Moving on then, uh, what next for Carl Frampton? And did you see Tony Yoka ice that guy in the first round last night? <laughs> I did. Uh, Johan Duharpus, who's a, who's a durable guy, right? Listen, gatekeeper guy. He took care of business, didn't he? 28 year old, 8 and 0, 7 by way of. Is he going to be a threat? Are we going to see him fight Joyce? Why does nobody oh, yeah. call out Tony Yoka? Nobody calls him out, do they? Well, I, they, he sort of lost a bit of momentum again, was a missed drug test and other things. He's lost some momentum, hasn't he? So, what Yoka really needs is momentum. Dave Allen fought him, though. He wasn't bothered, was he? Went to France and got stuck in. Yeah. We have to give Dave credit for that because nobody else has mentioned him. Dubois don't mention Yoka. Dylan White has nightmares about Yoka. Nobody's mentioning Yoka. And I think, down the line, we could see Yui against Yoka. What do you think to that? Would that be a good fight? 26 years. That'd be a really good Yoka. fight. World Championship Junior of Gold against Olympic Gold. Are they going yeah. to to take it on? I think naturally what they want to do is take Yoka to the US. I mean, he's, I think he's still backed by Richard Schaefer. Yeah. So what they really want to do is get him in the US and fighting out uh, there. Duhapas was a good fight to make because two French heavyweights fighting against each other. Yoka's quite a big star in France, so... But yeah, I think with Yoka, he needs to get a string of wings together and then he can start talking about the guys you mentioned because not many people in the UK have seen him, have they? Can't miss him. He's a big old lump. Yeah. He's fast as well. He's a good fighter. Dave Allen said he's the hardest he's been hit. Yeah. So, Carl Frampton, what next for him? Is he on skid row? Uh, one fight against Herring at some point and then they both retire. That's my prediction. Yeah. All right. Pundit work. Now, we always am at pundits, don't we? Because, well, that last night from Richie Woodall was, was shocking. But would it, be, would it be nice to see Robin Reed, Clinton Woods, Ryan Rhodes, Joe Calzaghe? Would it be nice to see them sort of guys on Sky or Channel 5? Um, so I think with pundits, right, you get better like, the more you do it. Um, I didn't mind, you know, I think Carl Frampton, he's quite good at it. Yeah. Um, but when fans don't enjoy the pundits, and when it's football, right, the guys don't get other shots. So if the fans don't like you, you're, you don't, you know, you're not going to stay on. So what they need to do more is listen to what the fans think about pundits. And also try different guys. Try ex-fighters, try ex-trainers, try guys that have been, you know, cup men or seconds in corners for years. You know, try somebody that's been in the management side of boxing. Try an amateur coach that trains a lot of, you know, young fighters or, you know, from the gym. What they need to do is just have more variety and also find what the right mix is so that the fans are happy with it. Who would you rather listen to? Dave Caldwell or Robin Reed, Joe Calzaghe, Clinton Woods, Ryan Rhodes? I, you know what? I can't really say who I'd rather listen to because I haven't heard many of the others do punditry. 
So what I'd rather do is that everybody got shot so I could actually make a real assessment on who I like. You think and it's not... Sorry, go on. Sorry. I was going to say, it's not just my opinion. The problem is most of the pundits that are currently on Sky or BT, a lot of the fans don't like. So why do they persist on having these pundits on? Yeah, go on, yeah. Yeah, so what? So why why keep pundits on that aren't liked? If people didn't like Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher on Sky Sports, they would look to have other, you know, they'd look to replace them. Yeah. Do you feel that Robin Reed and Carl Zaghi, Clinton Woods don't get the offers to go on Sky because they don't play the social media game? Not even that. It's it's partly because they aren't pally with the people at Sky. Yeah. As I, I think, as I said in my last video, remember when they do the punditry, they'll go somewhere, whether it's a bubble, whether we believe the bubble exists or not. Uh, there's obviously a lot of stories around that. Um, or whether it's, you know, going on these trips abroad, Adam Smith and all the other guys, the Sky Mafia, as you like to call them, they will have to spend quite a lot of time with these guys and they'll have to get along with them socially. They'll have to go for drinks with them. So what they end up picking up is they end up having their mates there, people they like spending time with. And that's part of the game is, are these guys people that they want to spend time with? And perhaps the other guys, they don't know them as well. So they just not going to give them a chance because they like spending time with their mates, even if they aren't great pundits. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, moving on, then. Do you think that's fair? What's your opinion, Ross? I just think that uh, well, Robin Reed's worked on Sky before, and I know when Clinton worked on Sky, and Clinton won't mind me saying this. Clinton were on Sky, and they they asked him he was like heavyweight champion of the world for more than three yeah. years. Now, what fighters in England have held the world title belt over three year? Mike Tyson only held his belt three years, didn't he, in his first reign? Yeah. So Clinton's on there for his expert analysis and he was giving an analysis on a fight. I'm not going to say which fight because it's not fair. I think, I can't remember, but I think Clinton said something like, well, he shouldn't be in with him and uh, it's a mismatch or something. And Clinton were pulled and said, oh, you can't say that on here. And Clinton's like, well, you know what Clinton's like. He's like yeah. just a genuine normal bloke that you see down in and goes chippy on my own with his mates. He said, well... That's got me here for me uh, analysis, aren't they? I'm a world champion. I mean, there were no Commonwealth in them days, or were there no no English? I think Clinton went area, British, Commonwealth, European, world, and over three years, been in with Roy Jones, Tarver, yeah. all of the money, Glenn Johnson three times, been in with all of them. And he's not allowed to give his opinion, but he's there for his expert analysis, isn't he? Is it because Clinton probably won't play the game like a Richie Woodall? Like probably others, you know, at Sky, Johnny Nelson. I mean, God, God don't even we'll, we'll get to you later, Johnny. I'm not like <laughs> all right, and you bean. But do you think that cost telling the truth can shoot you in the foot? And Robin Reed's similar. He, he, he's not going to sugarcoat it. He's just going to tell it straight. And Joe Calzaghi's, you know, been on there before and told it straight, not being a company man. Do you think that they look for company men nowadays? Yeah, they do. Uh, because remember, part of it is Sky has a deal with Matchroom. And for Sky Boxing to be a success, they have to make out that Matchroom puts on the best fights and the shows and everything else. Yeah. And that's part of the game is that they selling Matchroom. They're not selling boxing. They're not selling fighters from other stables. They're selling matchroom. And part of the pro and part of the thing is, if somebody's too honest, they can call bullshit, which we all know fans. But what, what the pundits are really there for, they're there to dupe the casual fans. So when White fights against Povetkin, they can spin all these narratives a thousand days because no casual fans going to check that. And they can talk about how dangerous Povetkin is or when Joshua fights against Takam, like how dangerous this guy is. Whereas fans, actually, hardcore fans, know the truth. They'll know that Takam is a guy that is not going to beat Joshua. No way that's going to happen. So, yeah, so part of the job is not only saying what you're seeing and being honest. Part of the job is to try and spin the matchroom narrative. And that's the detriment. Where, where's in the football punditry, right? Sky own the whole Premier League, right? They watch, you know, they... 
they most of the Premier League games on Sky, some on BT, obviously, and Amazon Prime. But for Gary Neville and uh, Jamie Carragher, they can call out teams and managers and other things because all of them are on Sky. Yeah. So all of the teams end up playing on Sky at some point in the season. So it doesn't make a difference whether they're going to be honest or not. Whereas in boxing, it's just trying to spin a lie. That's And whoever's willing to do that is sort of fit for the job, unfortunately. Yeah, can I just put this on? Somebody's just sent me this. Yeah. I can't see that from the screen. You can't see it. Oh, there we are. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Luke Campbell. Yeah. We've come a long way. <laughs> Yeah, more like, more like fucking gone backwards. <laughs> Thirty-three year old. He's not got a British. He's not got a European, and he's not got a world. But he's an Olympic gold. Even Audley Harrison had a European title, didn't he? And fought for a world. So if Luke Campbell don't win a world title and has two bites at cherry, and don't win the other, the the at least a European. Can we say that Luke Campbell's worse than Audley? Because we'd have to do, wouldn't we? Probably. Well, Audley, although... Audley's the butt of everybody's jokes, but he's got a European title, hasn't he? And yeah. An Olympic gold. Luke Campbell's got a Commonwealth and Olympic gold, so the clock's ticking on him. He's 33 for a lightweight. Do you agree? I agree. I mean, again, I, I think the Linares fight, I he scored that a draw myself. It was a split decision win for Linares. Uh, we all know that Linares wasn't at his peak when he fought against Campbell. Uh, but yeah, I think Luke Campbell's one of those fighters when he's coming up, I was super excited about him. Uh, he looked the part, then he lost to Mendy. And at that point, you sort of knew that maybe he isn't the guy that we all thought that he was. Um, and it's really a shame because Luke Campbell has all the talent in the world. Uh, maybe he turned pro a bit too late. Uh, but yeah, I think they... It's a real shame. Pro I don't think he's reached. Pardon? Been a pro seven year, Rico. Yeah, exactly. Seven year, mate. I mean, what, 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 what more does he want? Does he want it on a plate? You know what I mean. That's how I look at it. But it is what it is, isn't it? All right, then moving on. Uh, Mark Tibbs, Billy Joe Saunders, and the Ben Davidson soap opera. What do you think? Where's Billy going? And is Ben Davidson playing the game, coming out, saying, yeah, we're mates, and Billy needed a change to freshen it up, this and that. Basically, would we respect Ben Davidson more if he come out and said, look, Tyson got rid of me, Billy got rid of me, I'm inexperienced, I'm still wet behind ears. Or why do we have to come, why do they have to come out and play this? I might work with him down the line and... He's been with Dom twice, me twice, Mark Tibbs, and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Why do we have to put up with this crap? Why can't they just say, look, we've, we're not working together. You don't rate me. Because when you're taking world champions on that have won everything and they're undefeated and they're letting you go, that's a message. Am I right? Yeah. When Man United and Liverpool let you go, it's downhill. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, right. Adam, Adam, Adam Lalana, where's he now? Who's Brighton. He Brighton, where yeah. were he? He was with the yeah. champions of the league, the champions of the world, and the European champions. He's at Brighton now. <sighs> He's Ben Davidson now. <sighs> but talking a good game. You know when uh, you know when you're younger, right, and you've got a girlfriend, and they dump you. No guy ever says they dumped me, right? There's always a backstory. Oh, we mutually, you know, we decided mutually, or we had a talk or something. Yeah. That's what trainers do, and I, I sort of get why they do that because it's a natural thing. Because the media asks them straight away, and they have to come up with some excuse. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to see what Billy Joe Saunders says about that. Um, ben know. Davidson. He's an MTK trainer, right? So he's the guy that MTK will put their top fighters to when they need to be trained. And then often they move on to be trained by other people. Um, but for Ben Davidson as well, he's got Josh Taylor, uh, who's his, you know, he'll be the guy that's going to make the most money out of Billy Joe Saunders and Josh Taylor in the next fight. So that, so he's sorted on that front. Whether he's a, whether he's a trainer learning on his job, Yes, of course is. Uh, have we seen 
Have we seen him improve fighters a lot? Uh, questionable. I mean, Tyson Fury lost a lot of weight, but Tyson Fury is one of those fighters that you don't really need to train. And also in the second world of performance, he performed a lot better with Sugar Hill. Um, I don't know whether that was Tyson's game plan and Sugar Hill just said, yeah, we'll do that, or what's the case. What Ben Davidson, the real asset test will be someone like Josh Taylor against Ramirez, because we saw what Josh Taylor did against uh, Pro Gray, right? Who's a similar level fighter. Can he improve on that? Well, we're going to see, but what's he, what's he doing with Isaac Lowe? Well, what, is, he still, is he still training Isaac Lowe or is Sugar Hill training Isaac Lowe? I don't know, but uh, what did Ben do for Isaac Lowe? We don't know. We, I think we can't judge Ben Davidson until he's done something with your kid he's brung through. Yeah, I mean, and Isaac Lowe wasn't even a Ben Davidson fighter initially. I'd, I'd just like to see him improve a fighter. I'd like, to, I'd like to see him get a fighter, even at British level or Commonwealth level, and then take them to world level. Something like, like look up the stuff that Mark Turbs did with Dillian White, right? Yeah. Raw uh, got him to world level. It, it's not Mark Turbs' fault they never fought for world title, but there's nobody that can dispute that Dillian White improved massively under Mark Tubbs. Yeah. And then once Mark Tubbs fought, you know, once he fought his first fight without Mark Tubbs, we all know what the out outcome of that is. Yeah. Uh, I've actually got one of Mark Tubbs' heavyweights, uh, some sparring tomorrow at Peter's. A uh, young kid, he's a bit raw. And he he's, uh, starts there tomorrow. He's there for a week. So that's good, isn't it? And he's got, he's ended up with, Mark Tibbs has come out of everything smelling of roses, hasn't he? The last couple of months. Yeah. When White goes and gets beat, he gets a load of PR off it, and he's ended up with four new fighters. One of them's 10 and 0, and heavyweight, and he's got this other kid who they reckon's really good. He's turning over. There's another kid who's, I can't say, and there's Billy Joe gone back there. So he's ended up stronger than ever. He's got a new gym. So Eddie Irma down there the other day. So he's in a good position, isn't he? He's turned a negative from Mark Tibbs. He's turned a negative from losing Dylan. It's been turned into a positive because everybody's saying, "Oh yeah, that's him who trained Dylan White." They went eleven and 0, five knockouts, got him into a good position. And Billy Joe's. Everybody's thought, "Yeah," because Mark Tibbs doesn't play social media game, does he? He's not hanging no. out the back of people on IFL every day, is he? He's a good trainer. And people, you know what? When when big fighters leave stables. Yeah. It means that there's more time to be spent on other guys because if Dillian's the main guy to stay, but if you're a young kid, all you're going to be doing is following Dillian around at camps and stuff, and it does, might not work for your cycle. Whereas now he's got a lot of young fighters that are developing, uh, and obviously you've got Billy Joe Saunders, who's sort of a top level fighter. So, you know, it's sort of the perfect setup for him. And also he can just. He can work from his gym. Anybody that comes to him works for his gym. There's no camps in Portugal. He can be near his family. Um, it can be something that can be going on for years, right? The gym he has in Raynham, that could be sort of a base for fighters in the, you know, London and Essex region and so forth. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so, we wish Mark Tibbs well, don't we? He's a nice kid, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't call him a kid, but he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's a nice fella. He's, he's my age, and he's a nice fella. Uh, we've done the tale. Shannon Courtney, Chantel Cameron, Terry Harper, Katie Taylor, Savannah Marshall, Natasha Jonas. Uh, will that be... Will, will they all be on a show that's pay-per-view soon? Will we see a women's pay-per-view sh show? I mean, what do you think? To be honest, the numbers will dictate that. And the only way it could ever be pay-per-view is that you'd have um, Savannah Marshall and um, Clarissa Shields headlining that. You could then have Katie Taylor against Chantel Cameron. But it, for me, it would be a massive money. I mean, I, I hope I hope they would pay the women a good, uh, you know, good purses for that card. Because otherwise, given what women get paid in boxing, as we know, um, given that, you can't make a pay-per-view show legitimately, can you? No. No, you can't, mate. You can't. 
so we, we wish him well. If it's pay per view, well, that's where we're heading, isn't it? But I hope, I hope they all get paid. But I don't think it'll happen. Right, Fury Joshua. If it's for no belt, is it still undisputed? Will it happen? Well, I don't think it's for undisputed. If it's for no belt, will it happen? Maybe in four or five years' time. I, I honestly think they're going to drag it out, and when both of them are old and shot, they'll do it sort of. Uh, I'm here, Khan, Kel Brook style, but they'll actually make the fight in four or five years' time. Uh, when was the, who was the last undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? Was it Holyfield? It, was it Holyfield or Lewis? Uh, well, I don't think Lennox had every single belt, did he? There were one he didn't have, weren't there? Yeah, Riddick Bowes. Uh, which one was that? WBO or? No, he had the. He had. He might have been WBO. There's, I don't think Lennox had them all. I'm not sure. He might have had the ring. I'm not sure. It's it's all shrouded in mystery, and we never seem to get an undisputed. They no, talk about it and teasers, but we never get it. It's usually promoters' faults, not fighters. Yeah, but back then, um, the WBO wasn't regarded very highly, was it? No, ABI had it, and the Ring magazine didn't recognise it, did they, back then? Yeah. Riddick Bowes. I mean, it, so it? much stock is put into this idea of undisputed. We know who the best guys are in the division, or debatable, right? Who the two best fighters are. I don't care whether it's for undisputed or not. Or, uh, the only thing I want is the two best guys to fight in the division. If somebody else has a ballot in the division, then they can join the queue afterwards and fight them. But you're, you often know who the two best guys are in the division. In the heavyweight division, yeah, you'd sure. probably say... You know, you still, in my eyes, you still have three best guys. You still have Wilder, Joshua, and Fury. But if Joshua and Fury were to fight from a British perspective, that would be a huge fight. And then you could say, if Fury wins, he's definitely the best fighter because he's beat the two best guys. Yeah. Should we get rid of all the belts and just have the Ring Magazine belt and everybody else be allocated a number as a contender? Say, for instance, Fred. Bob you mean Ring Magazine Bob. rankings? Yeah, say Joseph Parker's like number seventh best heavyweight in world. He shouldn't be known as Joseph Parker, former world champion. He should be known as this is the number seven guy. I mean, I remember seeing an interview with Ali and they, they were slagging Joe Bugner and he said, you can't say bad things about Joe Bugner. He's the fourth best guy in the world, the whole best of China, Russia, whatever. He's the number four yeah. guy. And that's how it worked in them days. There was no confusion. But now we've got all these belts and trinkets and everybody making a claim to this and a claim to that. And it's just out of control, isn't it? I mean, it's just to get sanctioning fees to, you know, san you know, oh. sanctioning bodies, right? That's all, that's all it is. You know what? In an ideal world, yes, we'd love to have one belt. Is that realistic? No, it probably isn't because a lot of the... Uh, building up of shows and the marketing is built around the idea of, you know, this is a title eliminator, this is for version of the world title belts. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the challenge, isn't it? It's not realistic, but in an ideal world, yes, I'd love to have that. Yeah. Uh, Steffi Ball's tweets lately to Eddie Yearn and Sky have become more desperate. You've probably seen them. Yes. Uh, is that because they've knocked the Jonas fight back and he feels that he might have done something wrong and he feels that he's left in the cold uh, and, he, and he's trying to court favours? I don't know what sort of man tweets some of the stuff that he tweets to uh, Sky and Eddie Earn and it, it's cringe. And as a Doncaster man myself, I feel cringe watching it. Uh, what do you think, Rico? If somebody's my mate, right? Like you, my mate. You don't on Twitter anymore. Uh, but if I know you well and we have respect for each other, I'll pick up the phone and call you. So I think that says more about Steffi's relationship with that promoter and Sky Sports than it does say about anything else. And, you know, of course, he's just pushing for his fighting cringe, but he's hoping that people care enough and they, you know, people Tweet. start liking and retweeting it and saying, yeah, get the fight done. But the reality is, I think everybody would like to have a uh, Jonas against Harper too. Yeah, that's right. It's not, but it's not the top of the list of fights that people really care about. So if that goes on a card, then people will be happy that that's on the card. But frankly, you know, I don't think enough people really care about that fight that they want to see. There's more. There's so many good fights to be made in boxing that never happen, whether it be the super middleweight in Eddie's stable, 
that people really want to see. So yeah, I think it's it's definitely sort of trying to create something out of nothing. You think he's panicking because he don't have a everyday relationship with Eddie where he can pick up the phone, whereas with other people he can speak to him on a daily basis. You know, all the people in boxing. Do you think that he, he, because he hadn't had a, a call for a, a, a couple of weeks or so, he might be flapping? So he feels like yeah. a tweet out. Like I mean, that. Credit to Eddie. I mean, he's a pretty shrewd guy, isn't he? And he's a pretty cutthroat with the people that work as managers or work in the industry. So uh, I don't think what Steffi has to offer isn't of interest enough to Eddie. Eddie will get in touch when he wants uh, Harp on a card. But Harper's not a priority for Eddie. And it, it's a nice to have, but I think the bubble has probably been burst a bit here. So she'll be back on at some point, but again, getting it out there, there's not enough clamour for that. People actually, do you see people calling out that we really want to see Terry Harper fight again? No, no. I think she's forgotten now, isn't she? Because it's the first time she stepped up, she got levelled and they gave it as a draw. And I feel yeah, I mean, she lost the fight, but yeah, she lost by the way. Rounds, didn't she? Even Dave Allen said. Uh, all right then, moving on. Tesco Joe, has he live, delivered for these fighters? And if so, should we change his name to Sainsbury's Joe? <laughs> uh, Evening, Joe? Has he delivered for his fighters? I think the question is, putting Crawley in with Lomachenko, you're delivering for them financially, yeah. but are you doing the best you can for the fighters in that case? Mm. Well, did well like, it, like yeah, I mean, look at W World Boxing Super Series, he did well for him, but how much of it is the fact that the promoter and how much is it the management? Uh, well, Joe's manager of Callum Smith, isn't it? And I think he's also the trainer. Uh, yeah, I think he manages and trains most of his fighters, though, yeah, doesn't Callum he? Callum Smith, if you've never seen, he's just breezed through his career, not got a mark on him, undefeated, multi millionaire. He's done well for him, hasn't he? Joe's done well for himself, though, out of it, like he always does. But I kind of admire that. And I've been a very a big critic in Joe Gallagher's for the simple reason that we couldn't get him off TV whenever his fighters got beat. And he was always demanding rematches and that. But I don't, because he was saying it were close, this and that. But I don't see him saying anything about the John Ryder rematch, do you? No, no, I, I haven't seen that. Again, you know what? You've got to give him credit for. The game plan he came up with, John Ryder. Um, yeah, Tony Sims. With Tony Sims came up for John Ryder, but why would he want a rematch? Because that's a tough, that's a tough, tough fight for Callum Smith, as we've noticed. It's no yeah. style that works for him. So, from a management perspective, yes, he's done well. Has that delivered fans what they want to see from Callum Smith? Apart from that, George Groves fight, probably not. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Uh, Tyson Fury touching nearly 500 videos and Instagram posts since he fought Wilder in February. So basically, in seven months, there's anything he does, it goes on IFL and blah blah blah, nearly 500 and other YouTube stuff. And not, he's not had a fight in that period. Is it overkill? And is he going to shoot himself in foot down the line? For example, uh He's at this march and he's filming it and he's saying, Coogan, are you getting this? Are you getting this? Because he's obviously going to send it to IFL. Why is Coogan yeah. putting that on a boxing channel? Is Coogan caught between being a boxing media guy and being a friend with somebody and maybe thinking, if I don't put that on, they'll not want to give me access? Is he caught in that middle ground now where, he's, where he can be vulnerable? I think, I think you asked a couple of questions there. So I'll answer the first one around... I don't think that should have been on a boxing channel because that has nothing to do with boxing. I know Michel Droyfels was there behind the gloves and stuff, but again, it's not. This isn't. This isn't oh, boxing. She's always there, isn't she? She's Jenny. Yeah. On the, she's Jenny on the spot, isn't she? Yeah, but this is not boxing news. This has nothing to do with boxing. So, a boxing news outlet shouldn't cover it, should they? Yeah. Is it I mean, that's... now? Is it in-house media for MTK and Matchroom now for Coogan? Is he? If Billy Joe wants some out there, Tyson, 
uh, well, for MTK, Paymaster, right? MTK, MTK is Paymasters, right? Um, I don't know whether, you know, MTK have their own channels. If they were very supportive of that, they would have probably tweeted it themselves, uh, but they didn't. Does Coogan put um, himself down doing this? Because he's a very good interviewer and he's very comfortable behind the camera, not in front. He's very comfortable behind it. Is he letting himself down doing that? Because he's one of the best in the game for interviews and for getting stuff out of people. I think... And it's an hard work, because it's an hard job that, you know, traipsing about. You've got no life, you know. You're always on a time clock. Do you know what I mean? For yeah, so people. I think the question, the question is this. Is Coogan, is he doing everything for views? So it doesn't matter what content he puts out. It's all for views, right? And if that's what he wants to do, then that's his prerogative. Um, and I'm just looking now that the, what they call it, the TLM March, 25,000 views, 18,000 views, 78,000 views, one video. So in terms of views, just because it's Tyson Fury, it's done good enough numbers. But if he's all about views, then he can put up whatever he wants. But I don't think that helps the cause or the integrity of what the channel is about if it's more about boxing entertainment and you know boxers doing funny clips and boxers doing this and that and it's not even about the news anymore well, and yeah if, sure what if uh mikey garcia rings him up and says we're doing a mexican's life matters would he yeah. be on his channel no because it wouldn't do these no what if uh Tommy Frank rings him up from Sheffield, little Tommy Flyway, and says, Coogan, we're gonna, uh, we want you to put out a, a video of us, veg, vegetarian life's matter. Would he put that out? No, he wouldn't, would he? No. I mean, has the interview... Why would he put a traveller's life's matter, that one out? Because it's Tyson Fury. Because he put the Joshua Black Life's one out, didn't he? And there's his court again in the middle, isn't he? Black lives, travellers' lives matter. He's in the middle, but he's getting the views, but also... But the Joshua video, right, that wasn't something they went on the spot to film. They just syndicated it. The difference is they've actually actively gone out of their way to cover this. Yeah. And it's just because it's Tyson Fury. Mm. It's got nothing to do with the cause. It's got nothing to do with anything else. It's just because it's Tyson Fury. And... If it, is, if it is the channel that is about boxing and salmon and all about views because it helps with the numbers, then yeah, he's doing the right thing. But then also, I think it needs to be clear that the channel is more about boxing and salmon. It becomes like a lad bible of boxing, right? That's why it's a bit like a lad bible or sports bible of boxing where anything to do with boxing, whether it's funny clips or whether it's, uh, you know, boxers doing funny things, whether it's Eddie Hearn playing cricket at... Uh, what do you call it? The uh, yeah, five the Essex, Essex under nineteen opening batsman, opening bowler. Yes, exactly. Bob Willis exactly. of Brentwood. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then your earlier question is Tyson Fury doing too much? He hasn't fought for a while. I mean, he couldn't have fought for a while because of the pandemic. Is he doing too much? People are still tuning in. Um, if he doesn't perform well in his next fight, then we'll say it's been a distraction and he's been doing too much. If it doesn't impact what he's doing, fine. He's milking his, he's milking his fame for somebody that has m numerous times along their career said they don't care about the public opinion, they don't care about the media, they don't trust the media. It seems to be uh, his approach seems every, to be quite something different. every day now, isn't it? Tyson's out there every day. It's overkill, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, I don't watch it, so I don't frankly care. But if it's hindering his performance and it's not him and it's taken away from it, then we'll see that in his next fight. But for so, but my point is, as somebody that has said throughout their career, right, that he doesn't care about the media or public opinion. That's what he said many, many times, right? Yeah. Now he loves to be loved by the public and he loves the views and he loves people watching this stuff. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Do you think that uh, people in chemists are selling a lot of hair dye because Tyson's beard's, uh, well, I, I've got photos on here. He's got a ginger beard. It's now black. Yeah. It? it looks like some hard at village people, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Tyson's village people beard? I've seen actually guys do a lot more uh, 
dying off their beards recently. Like Tyson's beard at that TLM march, it was quite distinctive, wasn't it? Do you think you'll be getting a call off Steffi and veto uh, out Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> for a threesome. Hmm. <laughs> Moving on then from Tyson Fury's uh, George Michael beard. Yard Buatsi, we've covered that, haven't we? We think it's a great fight, mm-hmm. Rico. Where do you think it's a great fight? I think, it's, I think Buatsi beats him on points, but Yard's more seasoned. If he catches him, he could go. He's, Buatsi's more technical, but Yard's a bit more... If, do you know what? It's a 50-50 fight, and it's one that I'd pay pay-per-view for. It's a 25-quid pay-per-view. If that is... A hardcore wet dream, in it, Yard Boatsy. Yeah, it was a good undercard, but yeah. So, do you feel that Frank Warren and Eddie Earn, now that they need each other and they're going for this lunch together, or pie and mash, or jelly deal, and whatever you have with jelly deals, is it pie and liquor, pie and mash and liquor, whatever them people yeah. down, down south eat? I know we eat hedgehog up here and cabbage, but wherever they eat down south. They're going for it. But do you feel that after 10 years, they've got a bit of brass neck all of a sudden wanting to work with each other now because it looks like boxing's on skid row? In 10 years, we've had Frankie Gavin against Skeet, Skeet against Eggington, and John Ryder against Billy Joe. So in 10 years, which is 120 months, we've had three fights. Well, what about if they did one a month for that 10 years? You don't have to do them every week. One a month would have been 120 fights. So we missed out on 117 fights. They gave us three, right? Have they got some nerve all of a sudden wanting to work together and for the sake of boxing? Or is it because Frank's realised, you know, it could be in a bit of trouble here. We need to work with Eddie. And Eddie's like, look at Frank begging. I'm not going to give him the chance. Do you think their egos have been killing boxing for 10 years for fans and they've got the cheek to ask for pay-per-view? Yeah, I mean... We all know it hasn't helped boxing. They're not well, working Warren's like that, so I... isn't he? Warren's like that, capping hand, isn't he? There you go. Capping do, hand. I believe, do I believe that it's going to happen? Uh, that they're going to actually work together? No. I mean, nothing's to suggest that they're actually going to do it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, look, if they're going to work together, you can make some great fights. They should have thought about this earlier. You can see that, um, you know, Top Rank has worked with PBC on big fights before, whether that's Pacquiao against uh, Mayweather, whether that's Fury against Wilder. People should just work together for the interest of the fans. But I think actually the egos are going to stop them from working together. I don't think that Frank Warren actually thinks he needs Eddie and vice versa. They both quite have big egos, so they don't believe that they need each other. It's more just to distract from the poor cards and all the shit that's going on in boxing. It's a distraction. Yeah. All right, then. Do you feel that Frank's upped his game, though, on social media? Because according to analytics, he's doing now 41% more videos than he ever has done. In last well, that's month. Dev Sony. I mean, Frank doesn't do his own social media, so that's... Not one about interviews on YouTube and stuff like that. His, his analytics have gone up with what he's doing. He never used to put his son out there this much, did he? Do you think this is because of the pandemic, or do you think that he's trying to play the game? Trying to do an edit. I think it's, I think it's a bit of both. I think he realizes that it's important, and I think he's got a decent stable, so he thinks it's part of his job is to promote these guys, and part part of the job is to sort of counter narrative to what Eddie says, so he can back back and say this is not true. But also, it's partly because of the pandemic, and we all probably spending more times on our phones and on our screens than we have done before because there isn't as much to do. So. Part of it is that, um, yeah, people just watching more content at the moment. So I think it's definitely the right thing for Frank to do, and he probably should have done it years ago. Um, but I quite like actually hearing Frank's opinion about things because we get so much of Eddie's opinion. I'm not saying, I'm not saying Frank's opinions are right, but actually we're having counter-arguments that there isn't just one mouthpiece for what's going on in British boxing. And that's important for the fans, whether you agree with either of them. You just need multiple voices. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, Ozzy Smith on Boxing Asylum and Steve Wellings, they said that England, I think Andy Patterson said it as well, England is the new Germany. Eddie Earn is the new Kalasaul. And, you know, for years, Germany, were, it was, it was a shocking result. The Sven Ocker era and Arthur Abraham era were shocking. Yeah. 
with the Marco Hook. Do you feel that we've now got we're now worse than them? We're judging. And, yeah. And as well, yeah. Yeah, it's I think, um, and it's not, now and they think they need a knockout. I, I don't think it's even fighters that come from abroad. It's just the uh, B side. So it's fighters from. You know, if a Steve Wood fighter is fighting in a matchroom show or if uh, if it's, um, you know, if it's a Dennis fighter fighting on a matchroom show, as an example, then they're just going to have to work harder. So it's not even about somebody being a foreigner. It's about somebody not being the house fighter. Yeah. Um, Do you feel that Ian, 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 Ian John Lewis, you think that he's been shocking and appalling and poor? This last five years, a referee and a judge. Yeah. But has it been no worse than any others? Um, I mean, judging, right? There's always three right, judges. He's probably, he's probably up there, isn't he? Yeah, he's up, he's up there along the others. Ref, I don't the think... Refing-wise as well, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. he's Calamity James. Do you feel that uh, it needs freshening up a bit with a referee? Do you think they're all comfortable in the position, picking up big checks for the weekend? hotels and flying around the world do you think it needs a shake up like they give to that CJ Ross she got hammered didn't she yeah. uh, there was another one uh, the, the black woman she, she, she was a judge uh, I forgot her name now but she's a big big golden boy favourite she judged. Oh, was that's the one that gave I think it's CJ Ross isn't it yeah CJ Ross but there's another one as well is uh, it the one that gave Mabel the Canelo 114-114 uh, that was CJ Ross, but yes. the other woman is she's she's the one in the Hopkins Carl Zaggy fight who gave it to Hopkins. Oh yes. Uh, I think I look. think as I said last time when I was in this channel, I think you just need an independent arbitrator. So you need somebody yeah. to look at how the refs do and if they perform badly, then you put them into some bins and then you get rid of them. Yeah. Because at the moment you can perform badly for however long. But there's just a small pool of refs. What's the name? Uh, let me have a look. Carl Zaghi uh, against Hopkins. It's the judge. She, she's been involved in some shockers as well. Uh... Well, you have the problem is that you have this in, um, you know, in every boxing thing. Just the judging is just appalling so often, and he's so biased, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, she she's she's an American judge. Uh da, da, da. let's see. Adelaide Bird. Adelaide Bird. Is she still judging? Because she's had a lot of criticism, hasn't she? She's uh the wife of uh you know that uh, ref Robin Bird. Robert Bird. Well, you know, you know, they're on yeah. eight, eight, eight to ten thousand in Vegas on a weekend. So, if he's working a weekend show Friday and Saturday, he's on sixteen thousand. She's on sixteen thousand. That's thirty-two thousand. They've got jobs in day as well. Now, I saw a thing on her on YouTube. They live in a massive house with a swing, swimming pool and that, not far from Mayweather, in a gated community. So, is it a case of pick? No, nose is in the trough again, do you think? Well, think about it this way. Rewarding in confidence, you, isn't it? You don't even have to be given a brown envelope. If that's how much you're going to get for a fight... You don't have to be told, do you, to just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. To go with the, you, you know you want to be on the next uh, Golden Boy card in yeah. Vegas, don't you? That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. All right then. Moving on. We, 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 we've proved our point now. We aren't calling anybody. Right. Moving on. Callis Howland said he wasn't a very good boxer. He was all right, but he said he can have it on the streets, but he called it on the pavement. He's a bit tasty on the pavement. In his interview on IFL, can we set a fight up between me and Callis Howland on the pavement? What do you think? I'd have it with him. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, we could do like a fight tour. So you start you against Steffi Bull, and then we go to Callis Sauerland and Steffi would box my ears off. We know that, don't we? But on, <laughs> but if it weren't in a ring, I'd, he knows he'd be in, in a lot of trouble. But uh, I'd have it with Callis Sauerland any day at week. I'll go meet you now, Callis. Callis, I'll come down and see you now. Fetch your he lives up in North London, doesn't he? Callis, 
turn up in your Tottenham Hotspur uh, top? Because what do they call? What do fans call them? Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, is it the gym? I don't think it, yeah, I don't think you meant to say that word anymore. But yeah, oh, I gym, think so. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, what what do they call them? Because I'm not. I don't follow football. What do, what do they call them? I think I they call them that. Call them jids. Yeah. What 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 does it mean? I, is it what? Does it I mean? think it's something to do with uh, being Jewish or something. Oh, but I think it's a, we're not having a think, Jewish people. It's just me being an ignorant northerner. Yeah, exactly. Oh but, yeah. Well, Kala, fetch your Tottenham Hotspur top and come see me. So, uh, Den's drive-through show. Tommy Frank against Kyle Youssef at Vacant British. I'm not going to say how much they're getting. Uh, it's a lot like for what it is. Uh, will it happen? And if not, is he paying lip service to, to him to just to keep just to just to keep it mix? What do you think? And if it does happen, is it a masterstroke and innovative? You know what? If it, I was thinking about this. If it does happen. Yeah. Hats off to them because actually, somebody's actually trying to do something. A lot of small promoters just saying we can't do anything uh, because because you know we can't sell tickets. They're not thinking about ways. So if he does it, I'd say it's a masterstroke. Yeah, I hope it happens. I can't really see why it wouldn't happen apart from you know it was never then going to happen or it's never meant to happen before. And I think it's a really good fight. I think it's a Good, good fight for Betty's title. Yeah. All right, then. Well, let's hope that Dennis pulls it off. Uh, he's always in mixing it, Dennis. He's like a bogeyman, isn't he? He just won't go away. Won't yeah. Go away. So let's hope Dennis pulls it off because he needs some luck, doesn't he? Yeah. And I also think that if he pulls it off, hopefully it will give other uh, small promoters confidence to try and come up with ideas and get boxing on the show because the reality is when small hall promoters aren't putting shows on. A lot of the good prospects that aren't signed with top guys aren't getting showcased their talent and some are going to fade away from the sport. So the longer it goes on that they can't do it, the more talent's being lost. And ultimately, some of these people's livelihood is partly boxy. Hopefully they've got another job. They, um, you know, they're losing money and nobody really wants to see that, do they? All right, then, moving on. Uh, Clinton Woods against Bellew at £175. Who wins? Uh, prime, prime against Prime. Uh, for 175 definitely Clinton Woods. Yeah, I'd say that. Clinton flattens him. Frotch against Callum Smith at the Peaks at 168 Uh Frotch stopping Callum Smith. Yeah. Do you think Callum Smith fluked to ring magazine belt? By beating Groves? Yeah. Uh, you can't say fluke because we knew Groves was shot at that point. So, you know, he had his shoulder thing, but he could only fight what's in front of him. Whoever would have fought, a lot of guys that would have fought Groves that night would have beaten Groves. But he got to the final, pretty easy pass, got to the final, um, won that fight. So, he. I think he earned it, to be honest. He earned, the fight. he earned it because you can only fight what's in front of you. Yeah. Uh, is being in the media nowadays a drug for people like Tyson Fury, Tony Bellew, Eddie Earn, Johnny Nelson and Adam Smith? All have upped the game by the following. Tyson's media game in the last two years been up 88% on analytics. Bellew's has up 61%. Eddie Earn's has up 84%. Johnny Nelson's is up 92%. He's doing more interviews than ever. And Adam Smith's is up 44%. Are they playing the media game or is boxing in such a state that they feel that they have to do that to keep the fans interested? Or do they just love the camera? Yeah, I think naturally they all love the camera, right? But in any ways, I think it's good, right? The more people watch boxing and the more people follow... And some of the, Yard and Boatze. Yeah, but some of these guys, uh, they've crossed out, like they've done crossover stuff. So Tyson Fury's documentary was on ITV. Uh, Bellew was on that SAS thing. Yeah. Uh, he's been on Sky Sports. I mean, he's been everywhere, right? Yeah. So yeah. that helps, but it doesn't matter how much you up the media game in boxing, like how many people watch your clips and how many people follow you. 
if the product is poor. So if the best aren't fighting the best and you're not getting the big fights, yeah. it doesn't. You can't sugarcoat that by doing lots of interviews, other things. So it's it's probably a positive that more people watch it. But ultimately, it's like football is doing a lot of stuff, but then no top teams facing against each other. Yeah. All right then. Uh... How many more? I need to go and get some lunch. No problem, mate. Well, just just uh, one more, then we'll do one more. Right. Uh, okay, mate. Let's have a look. Let me pick a good one. Let me pick a good one. Let me pick a good one. Tyson Fury, is he a goat? Not defended a belt yet. Two world title wins. Can he call so, himself a goat? Well, uh, I don't think you can because this area of heavyweight isn't deep enough that you can do it. Yeah. So you don't think he can now? No, I I don't think he can ever do it. Just it doesn't matter even if he goes the rest of his career undefeated, because part of being the greatest ever is who you face against. So if you look at someone like Ali, right? Yeah. You look at the guys they faced against, he's faced against legit Hall of Famers, first ballot Hall of Famers. Look at, and then in them days yeah. no belts. Well, there's only one belt. Yeah. Two. You look at Sugar Ray Robinson. The guys he's for, Jake Lamotta, everyone else. So part of it is not about, and you can't knock Tyson for, you can't sort of knock Tyson for the error that he's in. But part of it is that the guys he's going to face aren't going to be close to your Joe Fraser, it's close to your Ken Norton. It's closest we've got to Ali as regards skills and entertainment outside the ring, showmanship. But his CV don't come nowhere near Ali's, does it? No. No, Jamie McDonald's got more world title wins than Tyson Fury. He's more than well, exactly more than tripled it. Exactly at the moment, yeah, exactly. So, all right then, Rico. Well, it's been emotional. He has. I do apologise. I know what it's got. I do apologise for calling the Tottenham fans Jedi. See what I'll do that. What someone like. <laughs> I apologise for that because it's just ignorance. Because I'm a Doncaster Rovers fan. <laughs> and I'm at Liverpool as well, but Donny Rovers. So, do apologise, but we're not going to take it out because mistakes get made and people say things, and I don't like to edit anything out. We just like to keep it real. So, we'll apologise, but if you have a problem, I don't really give a hoot. But sometimes I say things and it just comes out of my mouth. So, I do apologise, but you'll not win the league, and Harry Kane will leave you next year. How's about that? <laughs> So, well, and that was right, when Liverpool beat him 2 0 in cup final. But yeah. it is what it is anyway. But nice to speak to you, Rico. We've had an hour and one hour for 35 minutes or something like that. It's been brilliant. Quite longer, but yeah. good as always. Yeah. Uh, well, enjoy your, enjoy your interview later with Terry and let's see. Uh... I'll let Terry finish off the rest of these uh, 33 questions or whatever it is. Rico's bailed out after 27 for a bit of lunch. Bit of Sunday roast. Yeah. <laughs> all right, my friend. You take all care. Right. Don't let Terry wind you up about Carl Frotch, all right? <laughs> I'm ready for him this time. I'm gonna, next time he comes up here, we're going to take him through to Carl's. Carl's going to put him in an headlock. All right. Yeah, exactly. All right, mate. Take, take care. Right. Cheers. Right. Right. Don't get nightmares. Cheers. Bye. Don't have nightmares, Rico. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, that was me pal, Rico. Uh, I think that's about it, really. I think it's time to uh, upload this. 20 past 12 on a Sunday. I think I'll get this straight out. Uh, I hope you all liked it. Like I said, I'm not really bothered if anybody gets offended. I'm not, I'm not after any new mates in my life. Uh, I've got enough mates. So, all right. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Keep the comments coming. And don't forget to share it amongst your pals if you like it. Uh, I think that's about it, really. All right. Turn this off. How do we turn this off, Rocky? I'm going to show it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Say goodbye, Rocky. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to Porky followers. Come here.